And so, in 1952, there was already much experimental, many experimental results on the, these kinds of reactions, and there was a symposium. I wasn't at that symposium. I knew nothing about it then. There was a symposium, and they presented all of these results, these experimental results, obtained from measurements of reaction rates of these kinds of reactions. And they saw that certain reactions were very fast, and other reactions were very slow. And the question was how to explain why all of these reactions, which had in common the transfer of an electron, nevertheless could differ so much in the rates at which they would do that. There was a paper in the symposium issue of that 1952 journal by Bill Libby. Bill Libby is one of the people on this collection of photographs for the Nobel Prize winners. Bill Libby won the Nobel Prize for his work on radiocarbon dating, a very important contribution. But at this symposium, Bill Libby had an explanation for why some of these Isotopic exchange reactions are very fast and others are very slow. Several years later, I happened to be in the library and just leafing through journals and saw that symposium and saw this article of Bill Libby. And immediately, when I saw that explanation that he had, he applied what is called the Frank Condon principle, a principle that was developed in the 1920s, but was developed for not reactions, but for understanding this, the sort of spectroscopy, the light absorption of molecules and certain of their quantitative properties. And he applied that principle to these chemical reactions. I had previously worked on various things in, in chemical reaction rate theory, but this was entirely novel. And you know what it's like in your own fields when you see something that is novel, unexpected, that comes up in your field, and you get very excited about it. And so I got very excited about it, because it was so new, so novel. And the idea that he had was an idea in basic physics applied to these reactions. The idea was this. When an electron jumps from one reactant to the other, it does so, when it can do it, it does so very, very quickly. So quickly that the heavy atoms, they're all heavy compared with an electron, the heavy atoms don't have time to move during that jump. They're frozen for a moment. And he recognized then that if that happens, all of a sudden the new charges, the electron is now in a different place, the two ions now have new charges, all of a sudden these new ions that normally would be in a nice environment that they would like the way the solvent molecules are orient, oriented towards them, they're in the old environment, not the environment that's appropriate for them. And he realized that therefore, with that electron jump, all of a sudden you produce a high energy system. And that depending on the size of the ions, that was a key factor, and certain other things, depending on the size of the ions, that new, the novelty of that new environment could be greater or less. The smaller the size, the more novel the environment, so to speak, the more strange the environment, the more wrong the environment, because there's used to the old forces, used to the old forces, would be. Wrong because when you have a small line, you have very, very strong fields due to the charge acting on the dipoles, these order, ordered pairs of charges that constitute water molecules. Water molecules are dipoles, orient towards the charge. And so small ions had very large barriers, very, very large increases of energy, and were slow, and vice versa. 
So he was able to explain why some of these simplest reactions in all of chemistry were slow and why some were fast. As I mentioned, when I came across that article, I was excited. Here was something new and seemingly correct. But then as the day wore on, I began to feel uneasy. Perhaps you've seen it in your old fields, your own fields, that sometimes somebody has an idea in that field. And maybe at first glance that they seem right. But then as you think about it more, you can think of why it may not be right. Well, that was the case here. Libby's idea of applying that principle that when electrons move, they do so so quickly, the nuclei don't, the atoms don't have time to move. That was right. But what was wrong, I realized, was that, yes, the electron jumped, the energy was now much higher because the new ions were in the wrong